Maestro Gaming presents a Wobbly Wagon Wheel production about a nomad man. That man is the Gypsy King. Okay, ladies and gents, welcome back to another Maestro Game production. And as you can see, we are jumping straight into our first game of today's episode. Of course, this is the final game of the regular season. We find ourselves planted bottom of the table, nine point gap, basically 10 if you count the goal difference, because I believe there's about a 20 goal difference between us and the next lowest team. And we are going for quite the change. So as you can see, we have Halak in goal. We have Van Nick at left back, Boba and Gantz in central defense. Now that is partly due to wanting to switch it up. It's also partly due to the suspension of Guga. Guga is now suspended for a game. We then have Huffy on the right hand side. Park is our defensive mid. We have Stosic and Desmaili in central midfield. Takia is coming in at central attacking mid. Tadic and no place like home, of course, up front. Now our bench consists of Hankick. He is, of course, dropped in place of Halak. We then have Goals, Chilier, Lucas, John Ubi Mikel, Dimitri Payet, and of course, Fux Schaffer. And as you can see, they are going for a classic 4 4 2. So without further ado, let's go into the dressing room and talk to our assistant. And our assistant, Martin, thinks we should tell the team no uncertain circumstances, they need to improve. That is basically where my head is at right now. So we are going to. Do I assertively or aggressive? No, you want. Not accept aggressive. We need to be aggressive from the off with this team. We need to step up, lads. That worked, kind of. Three people reacted well. The rest, meh. But we'll take it. Ewald Botchel from the Australian Football Free Press. An untrustworthy fellow who has respect for us. It mean to call him untrustworthy if he's very respectful towards us, but SKN S Saint Pollen Poltons Poltons, yes. Recent struggles have them eleventh in the Premier form table. Is this a chance to pile on the misery? Well we're flat bottom of the form table, quite frankly. We are absolutely awful. But if we've got any chance, this is probably the best chance we've got to beat them. If they manage to win, by the way, they don't fall into the relegation group with us. But if we beat them, they will be the top, or at least top one or two teams in the relegation group. So it's definitely an opportunity for us to show what we're capable of. So Dismaili takes the captain's arm on today. What do you see in him as a leader? He is a born leader. He's a natural choice under these circumstances. Fully merits the decision. Park has been pulling all the strings in midfield lately. How important will he be here today? We certainly hope he can keep that form going. And he, yeah, he expects that of himself too. Probably. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Hopefully that's what he expects of himself to try and keep himself in the team. As you can see, we have dropped to a cautious approach because we are, quite frankly, awful as a team. So hopefully hit teams on the counter-attack, pick up some points, scrape a bunch of draws. Or maybe even pick up a couple of wins. Hopefully this will be the start of something. I was going to say beautiful. We've just conceded three minutes in. There's nothing beautiful about the start of this game. So I guess we are going to have to switch things up and go attacking already. We're going to have to tell the lads to show some passion. Because that is quite frankly awful. That completely lacked passion. That was very much a passion killer. But we have a throw with Des Maley. Throws it into Van Neck. Now with Park in the central midfield. Plays it to Stosic. Now to Park once more. Nice ball across field to Huffy. Huffy can he whip in across? He does. Will he get to anyone? No, it's headed away. But Des Maley has it over on this left hand side. Plays it back across to Van Neck. Van Neck, edge of the area. Making a lovely run. Nice pass over to Stosic. Oh, Tekia, you had space. You had time. And then you don't get it on target. To fear that was disappointing, my friend. There's Maley, as you can see, has got a little bit anxious. Same with Tadic. Now, can we get something going this time? There's Maley to Stosic. 
Stossic nice ball up to no place like home. Plays it back to Huffy. Huffy now with Desmaley in central midfield. Plays it out wide to Huffy. Huffy can he get down this right hand side? No. Plays it inside to Park. Now Pack holding up possession nicely to Stossic over to Huffy. Huffy comes inside nicely. Oh, he's tucking it on his left foot and it's Uber. Probably don't want our right back trying to attempt the shots, but any attempt is better than none at this point. So, can we win possession back here? It's with Ludbrutzik or something along those lines. Now with the guy's name, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce, coming down the right hand side. Stossik tries to tackle him, but it goes straight back to them. Pucci gets it across. It's, oh, Peru. Lovely save by Halak, though, on Peru's distant shot. And they have a corner. Come on, lads, get this one away. Get on the counter attack. You can do it. That's half of it. It's still on the edge of the area, though. Still quite dangerous. Missed tackle pack with a lovely clearance, though. And it's the end of the highlights. Another one though, they have a throw in deep in their own half, coming down this right hand side, of course, our left. It is with Pack. Pack now playing it back to the guy I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. Crossfield ball to Poo. Poo brings it inside, gets past one. That was not good defending at all. Luckily, Halak makes the save. And as you can see, very 50 50 on the possession. We've had six shots to their eight so far. We just haven't been getting them on target. We've got two on target to their seven. So what we should probably be doing is, let me just check if we've got whacking the ball, whacking the ball into the box, even. Yes, we do. Hmm. You know what? Let's try this. We'll switch it up to shoot on site and hit early crosses. That way, the two in the box can try and get onto crosses from the wing backs, and we can try and shoot from our attacking mid and two central mids pushing up. But that is it for the first half. They are currently 1-0 up through that fourth minute goal from Balik. Now, we've had eight shots. They've had ten. Four on target. They've had seven, six fouls to one foul. One yellow card, zero yellow cards. Four percent possession to 53. Our best performer has been Boba. He's got 6.9 so far. There's has been Balik with that one goal and a 7.1. Now, struggling to perform is Huffy. He's got a 6.4 and puts with his two mistakes and a 6.5. Unfortunately, those two mistakes haven't gone punished. Rapid Vienna is currently winning their one their game 1-0 at home to Mattersburg. We have Hartsburg currently 1-1 with Salzburg, and of course our game where we're losing 1-0. So Martin Fuchs told them it was disappointing. It was indeed. Um show me something else in the second half. See, that has motivated them. That has gave them the kick up the backside they really desperately needed. Hopefully it will actually work though. Desmaley with the corner whips it in. No place like home. Not in this stadium. That is for sure. It feels like we're playing an away game every game. As you can see we are now actually 10 points behind. And with that 22 goal difference gap. It's basically 11. We need to win 4 on the bounce. Which isn't looking likely, just to catch them up. So, what can we do here, lads? What can we do? I guess, because we are struggling so badly. Paddock is having a rough one. Paddock is definitely struggling. No place like home is not doing a whole lot, though, either. So, Paddock, you can come off. Um... Takia's having a bad game, so you know what, Takia, you come off, Dimitri Kaya can come on, bit of experience there. Huffy's our next worst player, so I guess goals can come back on, we can take you off that, and you can be a regular wing back on support goals. Hopefully those changes can actually help, we are going to go very attacking, regardless of how this current highlight plays out, because... We're losing. We're screwed either way. We need to push up. Luckily, that one goes wide. We escaped them scoring a second. We are going to tell the lads to show some passion again, though. That's fired most of them up this time. Thank you. Something has gone right. Unfortunately, nothing is going right other than my shouts, though. The players are just not doing it. Ivan's doing it, though. 
Christopher Dibbon gets his first goal of the season, assisted by Vucenovic. And the pain continues, ladies and gents. The pain is continuing. I feel like this is going to be very difficult. I'm losing hope myself. And we are yet to get into the relegation group. But it has ended here 2-0 to SKN St. Paul 10. 16 shots to their 24, 8 on target to their 13, 13 fouls to 4, 2 yellow cards, 0, 43% to 57. Now, our best performer, of course, was Boba. He got a 6.9 and I can see him retaining his position in the team after that one. Buffy, however, he struggled, got a 6.4, probably going to bring goals back in in his position. Dibon, of course, their best performer, 8.8 .8 and one goal for them. Lejubicic with his 6.6 .6 was their worst performer. Now, as you can see, do SG Tyrol have broken their all-time record by failing to win this game, which puts us on how many now? We've um, does it not give me a number? 16, 16 matches. That is an awful streak. 16 matches without a single win. But player of the match, of course, went to Dibon. So let's have a go at the lads, because that is quite frankly awful. I'm far from pleased. And they took it on the chin. Unfortunately, they're not actually taking my words in. They're listening keenly, but not taking a single bit of notice by the looks of it. As you can see, we've lost five in a row now. And to make it worse, four of them are actually under my management. So, as you can see, do SG Tyrol enter Austrian Premier Division uh, relegation group? So, we'll start relegation on five points. 50% of their total points. Ooh, so we start on half points. That is beneficial to us, especially considering the state we was in. Because that does mean now we are only five points away from Hartsburg, which does give us a little bit of a chance of squeezing out of this mess. But who do we have in our second? It's a repeat fixture, folks. So I will see you fine folks in a couple of weeks. I might try and get a friendly just to build the guy's morale up a little bit. But I will see you back here for the second game in just a second. Okay, everyone, so as you can see, we've had a little bit of a change of plan. We're not doing a double header against Poulton. We are actually playing our six-pointer against Hartsburg. So, as you can see from the table, they are a comfortable five points clear of us. Now, we do have a game in hand, but they also do have a dramatically better goal difference and thus are about six points ahead of us. Now, if we can win this, this will only put us three points behind. So, hopefully, fingers crossed, we can manage to do that. If not, I'm going to start to worry for us because I played a bunch of friendlies and, well, our team's morale should be pretty good. So I'll quickly go through them. So as you can see, we played these games here. So we played a game 1-4-1, one, one. we then won 2-0, won 6-0, 12-0, 2-0 and then 3-0. But I'm going to head on over to the stadium, so I'll see you fine folks there in just a second. Okay, everyone, so it's time to kick off our second game of today's episode. And of course, our lineup is Hankick in goal, Van Neck at left back, Guga and Gantz in central defence. Goal is on the right hand side. Park is our defensive mid in central midfield. We have Stosic and Des Mele. Central attacking mid is, of course, Takia, and our strikers are Tadic and no place like home. So on the bench, we have Halak, Huffy, Boba. Lucas, John Obi Mikel, Dimitri Payet, and of course, Vashuva, or something like that. That is as near as I'm going to get to pronouncing it. Anyways, and our opponents today on this Drizzly Day are going for a classic 4-4-2. So without further ado, let's head on into the dressing room. And Martin thinks to tell the team they're expected to pick up where they left off. And considering we had all those lovely friendlies, which went very well, I think it's a good idea too. So, assertively, um, we're huge on dogs, no pressure on you to succeed. Go out there and show everyone what you've got. Go out there and carry straight from where you finished the last match. Went down okay. 
Our assistant, not the smartest of guys, probably shouldn't be listening to him, but it could have gone worse, I suppose. Tino Susik has proven himself to be an incisive passer in the Premier Division so far. Do you have plans to stop him? Well, Ewald Botchel of the Australian Football Free Press, an untrustworthy fellow who is greatly respected by ourselves and us and him, I suppose. So, he's a fine player, but I have fine players too. I'm confident in their ability. Are you hoping that Hankick carries his recent good form into the match? Yes, I also expect the rest of the team to carry their good form into the match, otherwise we are screwed. How much of a boost is Kotler's absence? Any team will miss player of his calibre, but they've got suitable replacements. That seems reasonable to me. Of course, we are now heading out onto the pitch. We are going to stick with the cautious approach, because we're quite a bit behind even Hartsburg. So... It's going to be a struggle even playing Hartsburg here today at home. But we are going to hopefully pick up some points. I'm praying at this point. I'm praying for simply a draw, never mind a win. But we do need some wins if we are going to get off the bottom of the table. We have a game in hand, but unfortunately they have a free kick right now in a very dangerous position. Whipped in. Oh, it's off the post though. Niangbo runs it out and we get our goal kick. 30 odd minutes in, we have 10 minutes remaining on the half. Come on lads, I'm going to demand a little bit more of you. That's focused a few up, that's gone down well. Good job lads. I appreciate that. Desmaili is looking a bit tired on his conditioning. But we have managed to make it through a half without being behind. So it is currently nil-nil. We've had three shots. They've had five. One shot on target apiece. Three fouls, two fouls, zero. Look at zero. Look at six percent possession to 40. Now our best performer has been Guga. He's got 6.9 and no reason for it. Stumberg for them is their best performer. Five interceptions made and a 6.8. Now struggling to perform is Takia. He's made two mistakes and got 6.5. For them is the jury scene. He's got 6.4 and no reason for it. Other games around the relegation group, of course, we have Sturm Graz. Actually, I think this covers both. I'm pretty sure Sturm Graz is not in the relegation, but Sturm Graz is currently 2 0 up against Altach. We then have St. Poulton, who are currently 2 1 up against Mattersburg. So, Martin thinks we should tell the boys they did well and their efforts were excellent. So, um, how are we rating wise? You know what? We're doing pretty good rating wise. Takia's having a rough one. Um, passionately, we're not doing bad at all. If everyone continues, yeah, work hard. We shall win this, lads. We've got it. Come on. I kind of want to get on Takia's back, though. Although he is listening. Um, assertively, there's a lot more to come from you, and I believe you've got what it takes. Motivational, but didn't really hit it. That man does not have a heart. But we are going to... You know what? Give the lads a bit of praise. See how that goes down. Maybe that'll pick their spirits up a little bit. You know? They need a bit of a spirit lift. So hopefully that will kick in. We do have Desmaili, who is very tired at this point, though. I don't want to keep him out there when he's on that sort of... Hmm... Takia, how? No, Takia can't drop back. That is a bit of an issue. You know what? We're going to bring on the old heads. Hopefully the old heads can come out and help us here. So we'll get John Obi Mikel. He can sit in. He's going to sit back a little bit. We are then going to go and move Stosic up a little bit. Park now can be... Take more risks? No, we don't want him taking risks. Shoot less often, hold position. That seems perfect. Park, be our deep lying playmaker from back there. That is our substitutions. We're not going to make a third because it will be a little bit risky if we take a knock to an outfielder. I do believe in the Austrian league we are allowed to swap our goalkeeper even if we use up our subs. But we don't want an outfield player getting an injury and being screwed on that front. Desmaili though, Desmaili. Oh, that would have been a lovely way to leave the pitch if he just picked up a goal there. But unfortunately, Desmaili does not. Give a little bit more praise to the lads. 
We're not losing. This is a good sign. We're not winning either, but it's a step in the right direction, folks. If we can just get off this losing streak, that would be nice. Get off the losing streak, then get off the no-win streak, and then hopefully survive. It's the steps. Small steps, my friends. Small steps. We have dispossessed beer. Who has won it back? Interesting last name. I kind of want to sign him just because of his last name at this point. Park plays it out wide to Stosic, though. Stosic comes down left-hand side. Can he whip in across? Gets it across to Park. Oh, Park tries the screamer, but just not on target. As you can see, we've both been terrible in front of goal. We've had three on target out of our seven. They've had one out of their eight. This has been a very poor game to watch. If I was at this game, I would be requesting a refund. But we have finally picked up some points. Yes, it's a draw. And yes, it's against the team directly above us. And yes, it's even at home. But it's something. We're starting to build. Slowly but surely, we are building. A nil-nil draw here against Hartsburg. They've had, uh, we've had seven shots to their eight. Three on target to their one. Nine fouls to eight fouls. Zero yellow cards. One yellow card. 59 percent possession to 41. Now our best performer in today's game was Guga. He got a 7.1 rating. For them was Stumberg. He got a 7 rating. Now struggling to perform was Takia. He got a 6.5. And then Hart for them with a 6.4. Now the milestones, WSG Tyrol have now broken their all-time record by failing to win, which is now at 17. But we did stop the whole five-game losing streak, I believe it was. So, pluses and minuses, I guess. Guga did, of course, get the player of the match, so that is definitely nice to see from him. And our assistant thinks should tell the boys they did well and their efforts were excellent. And I don't think I'll go as far as excellent, but look at those ratings. The lads put in some effort there. So I'm going to... Yeah, you proved everyone wrong. Let's pick up the morale. We want to get the lads believing in themselves. So a bit of a passionate speech. Tell them they did well. Although we know they didn't. They didn't do a whole lot, did they? But <laughs> skipping over that. Oh, and I was right. The I'll touch... Graz game was in fact in the championship group, not in the relegation group. Because it I believe it was between Stan Graz I could be wrong. I believe it was between Stan Graz and Polton of who would actually drop into the relegation group. But that does leave us, of course, five points clear, six points still. We do have that game in hand though, so if we can make use of the game in hand, we're definitely in with a shot of survival. Still not very optimistic, as you'll see from our remaining games. We have two, four, five, nine remaining fixtures in the relegation group. But I thank you all for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you all have a lovely night. Goodbye.